For the last two years, the global aviation industry has been under immense pressure. But as many airlines start their post-COVID recovery, one local operator appears stuck in the brace position. A recent series of mid-air incidents has earned them the wrath of the Civil Aviation Authority. McFarlane has this report. Prayers on board British Airways Flight 6252 from East London to Cape Town. After takeoff, the plane's landing gear malfunctions and doesn't fully retract. The pilot makes an emergency landing. One month later, BA Flight 6324 experiences a technical glitch. It circles Cape Town Airport twice to get visual confirmation that its landing gear is deployed before touching down after circling for a third time. It's reported as a faulty cockpit warning light. Normally, nothing to worry about. But as routine as this latest incident may have been, it couldn't have come at a worse time for the plane's operator, Com Air Limited. A company with an exemplary historical safety and operational record, it's had a troubled two weeks. So troubling, in fact, that some are asking, is Com Air nearing the end of its runway? This was a very different scene two weeks ago. Saturday, the 12th of March, people made their way to airports across the country, only to be met with closed gates and empty check-in counters. News of Com Air's grounding traveled fast, and within a few hours, all the seats on competing airlines were sold out. Heading home to George that Sunday afternoon, Miranda van Damme was one of the lucky ones able to get a flight. It's cost me close to 3,000 rand, and I arrived safely finally at half past six that evening. Except for a few social media posts, communication from Com Air was limited and still is. Even our requests for an interview were rejected. The Kalula help desk was closed, the blinds were closed, there was not a Kalula staff member anywhere in sight. The Civil Aviation Authority's suspension of Com Air's Air Operator Certificate didn't come out of the blue. It followed a series of incidents involving Kalula and British Airways over the past six weeks. 10th of February, an in-flight engine shutdown. Ten days later, landing gear fails to retract. And on 7 March, another engine-related issue. Suddenly, there was a very loud clang sound that came from the left engine. Um, it was clear that something was very wrong. Donna Ferreit was on board the Kulula flight in February. Everybody was very scared. There were people that were trying to make contact with their families on the ground. The CAA found weaknesses in Comair's management systems. When an aircraft's engine fails, for example, it's not enough to simply replace the engine. Simon Sekhwabe is the executive for aviation safety operations. You need to identify the risk with a specific operation so that you know or you've got a certain level of comfort, the very same occurrence will not occur on the second one. At the end of the day, it's actually administration which keeps airlines safe. It's all about compliance. It's all about um, meeting all the extremely onerous terms and conditions of your aircraft operator certificate, which means... Dr. Guy Leach has a PhD in African aviation connectivity and is the editor and publisher of SA Flyer magazine. While applauding the CAA for maintaining a high compliance standard, he's not always convinced of their methods. Our own CAA is far too trigger happy. I, I don't know any other uh, airline regulator anywhere in the world which is as heavy handed as our own CAA is in terms of grounding airlines. We don't actually intend to opt to ground or suspend any operator. It is for that reason, when we find a deficiency in the system, we afford them the opportunity to address those deficiency. Only when they fail to do such is unfortunately the only option that we have is to protect the public by suspending those operations. The grounding of Com Air Limited came at a very bad time for the company, adding to the embattled operator's existing troubles. When COVID hit in 2020, many airlines found themselves in financial trouble and it was no different for Com Air. And in May that year, the company went into voluntary business rescue. Unfortunately, um, shortly before COVID, the airline went into a, a really ambitious growth expansion phase and um, it got a bit overextended. So it was very vulnerable when COVID hit. 
After finding itself in the red for the very first time in over 60 years of operation, a group of investors jumped in to save Com Air Limited and its airlines, embarking on a rigorous cost-cutting exercise. I think they used to have a staff complement of 2,200. They are now down to 1,200. So that alone tells you there's been a significant change that requires constant, constant monitoring. And we could not find what, how are they managing the changes implemented following the restructuring. There is talk that there's been a loss of skills and resources in Comair's um, safety management department, compliance department. It is estimated that Comair Limited lost an additional 100 million rand at the end of last year due to the strict COVID Omicron travel bans. Multiple retrenchment processes, um, salary cuts, cuts of benefits and conditions. All of these things have taken place at Coma in the last two to three years in the name of saving the airline. Pagamile Thubi Majola speaks for the National Union of Metal Workers. She says Coma's cost-cutting has also cut the time that planes spend on the ground undergoing maintenance. We know that because our members have actually um, raised this in various meetings with management. The technicians have repeatedly been recording in the logbook that they don't have enough time to deal with certain issues in the time allocated. But most of Comair's aircraft maintenance is carried out by three independent companies, Lufthansa Technique, SAA Technical and Nevergreen. All three of these maintenance organizations are now also under investigation by the CAA. In a surprise move last week, Comair cut ties with Lufthansa Technique, a German company with a solid international reputation. We have had the report for Lufthansa Technique issued. Yes, there are deficiencies. Not long after, the CAA suspended Lufthansa Technique's approval, saying the company isn't properly implementing management systems as set out in the CAA manuals. But the reality is, that the buck stops with Comair and its CEO, Glenn Osmond, appointed in 2020. Ultimately, he's responsible no matter who does the maintenance. Union Numse says CEO Glenn Osmond must resign. Is this fair? Should he go? No, I, I think it's a, a knee-jerk reaction. I think that uh, skilled uh, airline CEOs are very few and far between in South Africa. And um, Glenn Osmond is undoubtedly one of the very best there. If this was a pilot who was responsible for the grounding of an airline, we wouldn't be debating the removal of that pilot. But now, because we're talking about a white CEO of a privately owned entity, we are now debating that. This man has taken very direct decisions in our view that have led us to the point where we are right now. And if the board is serious about the steps that are necessary to infuse confidence in the, in the public's mind that uh, indeed they are tackling um, issues to remedy the situation, then the very first thing they need to do is replace Glenn with somebody who knows what he's doing. Although the grounding only lasted five days, the damage was done, and a lot of it by Comair itself. The biggest frustration for many Kulula and British Airways passengers was the lack of communication from the airlines and Com Air Limited. They wanted answers but were not getting any. We need to understand that every decision being made right now is going to impact Com Air in the future. What you do now is what matters and it's about listening to the voice of the customers. Carmen Murray is a marketing expert and netnographer using internet search data and social listening to guide companies. All you need to do is go to your social media channels and you can see what people are saying. They are saying that where is the frontline staff? Nobody's there, but where is the leadership? And one of the most damaging things for organizations is when the leadership is not present. I don't think that Comair did a good job on communications at all. Again, I, you know, one could blame cost cutting that they tend to cut down on this, hopefully not immediate staff, but um, most of the passengers were extremely irate that they were kept in the dark. And not surprisingly, people want to know, are their aeroplanes safe? One of the biggest trends that we are seeing is the fact that there's been a massive increase in the, the search um, around flight safety. Now, that flight safety searches are not just pertaining to Kami. 
and what's been created by one airline does not just impact one specific company, but the entire industry. Whether Com Air reclaims its place in the country's aviation sector remains to be seen. Right now, the fallout from the grounding is far from over. One of the knock-on effects I hear from this is the loss of the British Airways franchise um, because obviously the British Airways itself may be worried about the reputational damage being suffered by its own brand with this grounding. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.